Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress. Reporting on a scandal in the chess world, chess has made it to mainstream news, but not for the right reasons. On Friday the 12th of July 2019, this picture appeared all over the internet. It is the Latvian Czech Grandmaster Igors Rauzis, pictured in a toilet cubicle during a tournament game of chess with a mobile phone. Let me tell you the story of what happened. This is a tweet from International Master Lawrence Trent from July 2018. He said, has anyone else been mightily impressed by Grandmaster Igor Rouse's ELO games lately? I played him twice in 2013 and 2008 when he was rated 2518 and 2486 respectively and has now jumped to 2651. I never doubted his class, but to put on 200 points while in his 50s is unreal stuff. And indeed it looks too good to be true to gain so many rating points at such an advanced age. And since that tweet from July 2018, one year later, Rose's his star has risen even more. His standard rating is now 2686. He's in the top 100 of the world and he's the oldest member in the top 100. Rouses is from Latvia but plays for the Czech Republic Federation. Most of his rating points he won in smaller tournaments where he was the highest rated player. He beat a lot of lower rated opponents but because of the 400 points rule he still gained rating points that way. Even if he played somebody a thousand points or more below him then the rating calculation would be done as if he only had 400 points more. That is one of the feeder rules and that may be up for revision to avoid other players doing the same thing as Rouses did. But gaining rating points in smaller tournaments is well within the FIDE rules. Rouses did nothing wrong there. But many discussions were going on in FIDE and also on the internet on this player and on his steady growth. People were suspecting foul play. Here is a graph of Rouses rating that I found on the chess.com and chessbase websites. If you look, you can see that between 2003 and 2013, Rouses' standard rating was around 2500, the rating of a Grandmaster. Then he started to improve steadily and consistently, reaching almost 2700 in July 2019. And this is an example of a rating card from a recent tournament held in June 2019 in Strasbourg in France. There. Rouses played six games, his rating then was 2669 and you see the rating of the opponents at 2269, 400 points below Rouses' rating. It means that those six players all were lower rated than 2269, but for the rating calculation they counted with that rating. And you can see that Rouses gained almost five points in that tournament, winning 0.8 rating points with every of those six victories. Then in July 2019, Rouses played another tournament in Strasbourg, the 10th Festival des Chèques d'été de Strasbourg in France, held from the 10th to the 14th of July. There, Rouses was caught cheating when his mobile phone was found in the toilet by the team of the Fair Play Commission of FIDE, headed by Yuri Garrett, working together with the tournament arbiters. And I got these quotes from the chess.com website. During an open tournament, July 10th to 14th in Strasbourg, France, a phone was found in a toilet that had just been used by Rouses. He later signed a declaration that the phone was his. And Rouses said to chess.com, I simply lost my mind yesterday. I confirmed the fact of using my phone during the game by written statement. What could I say more? Yes, I was tired after the morning game and all the Facebook activity of accusers also have a known impact. At least what I committed yesterday is a good lesson. Not for me. I played my last game of chess already. End of quote. Four years ago in 2015, a Georgian Grandmaster was caught in a similar way and he was stripped of his Grandmaster title and banned for three years. And here in Rouse's comments he anticipates the fact that he probably will be banned as well. Yuri Garrett from the FIDE Fair Play Commission said FIDE anti-cheating procedures work best in team. The Fair Play Commission has been closely following a player for months. Trust me, the guy did not stand a chance from the moment I knew about the incident. 
The Fair Play Commission knows how to protect chess if given the chance. The final result is finding a phone in the toilet and also finding its owner. Now the incident will follow the regular procedure and a trial will follow to establish what really happened. This is how anti-cheating works in chess. And Grandmaster Emil Sultowski from Israel, the feeder director general said, Rouses is suspended from the tournament and all the material will be sent to the ethics commission. In parallel, the French police will take part. 10 days ago I wrote that I don't advise anyone to cheat. The capture of Rouses is the beginning. FIDE has tightened its attitude towards cheating. Although it is impossible to eliminate cheating, the risk of being caught has significantly increased and the penalties will be greater. The war against cheating will last for years and FIDE is in it for the long haul. Strong words from Grandmaster Sutoski, so cheaters beware. Let me show you the famous picture again. It is clear that Grandmaster Rouses is in big trouble, but you can also ask the question, who took this picture and what about privacy law? I'm sure we will find answers to these questions in the near future. But this is a chess channel, so let's play some chess. Let's have a look at one of Grandmaster Igor Rousos games from 2019. This game was played in the Czech Championship Extra Liga on the 20th of April 2019. White is Jakub Rubalik, a rating of 24-10. He is of international master strength. And black is Igor Rouses, Grandmaster, with a rating of 26-51. Let's have a look at what happened in this game. White opened d4, Rouses d5, c4, and Rouses played the Queen's Gambit accepted. Here knight f3 is the main move to stop e5. Or e3 is possible to try and take back straight away with the bishop. e4 is a third option and played by Rubalik. Here e5 is the main move, but Rouses plays knight c6, attacking the d4 pawn with two pieces. Bishop e3 to defend the pawn, and knight f6, now attacking the other central pawn. Knight c3 seems to be the natural move and is also the main theoretical move in this position. But Rubalik decided on f3 to defend the e4 pawn. Now e5 from Rouses, attacking the center. d5, and here knight d4, a pawn sacrifice which is also known by theory, played many times before. Usually white accepts the pawn sacrifice with bishop takes d4. A, e takes d4 and queen takes, and then black plays c6, attacking white center. But in this game, Rubalik did not go for the pawn, he took on c4 instead. Bishop c5, now the knight is protected well enough, and bishop back to f2, this bishop was unprotected on e3, so moves like knight c2 check would be in the position, that could be annoying for white, so bishop f2 takes those jumps out of the position. c6 attacking white center, d takes, and queen b6. Here c takes b7 is an option, again winning a pawn, bishop takes b7, and black has very good compensation for it, he is very well developed while white's knights are still at home and his king is in the center. Black is already ready to castle. So Rubalik did not go for the pawn again, he played queen d2 instead. Rouse is castled, and black has outplayed white in the opening and already has a better position after only 10 moves. But the question that immediately pops up in your head is if Rouse knew this theoretical line, or did he pay a visit to the toilet to look it up on his mobile phone? We will probably never know. Knight c3 developing and knight takes c6. We have a symmetrical pawn structure, but white is not developed yet and his king is still in the center. Black is better. Bishop takes c5, queen takes, and bishop back to b3. That bishop was hanging on c4. And now a very nice move from Rouses. Bishop e6. It's the engine's first choice. Black does not mind his pawn formation being compromised. He's playing for peace activity. Swapping off white's best piece. 
Rebalic took. F takes e6. Black's pawns have been shattered, but that strong white bishop is off the board. Rubalik has to develop. He played knight h3. Rook a d8 hit him the queen. Queen went to f2. And black knight d4. And what now? White is in big trouble. And we've only played 16 moves. Castling kingside does not really work because of knight g4. Hitting the queen. You cannot take the knight because it's really pinned. And if the queen plays, for example, queen e1, then there is a discover check. For example, knight takes f3, that is double check by knight and by the queen. So the white queen will be lost anyway. So castling kingside is not an option for white. And Rubalik went for castling queenside. But that doesn't solve his problems either. The king is very vulnerable there on the c file. Here a very nice shot from Rouses. But not very difficult to find. Knight takes e4. That knight can be taken by both the pawn. But it is pinned. And it can not be taken by the knight. Because the knight is also pinned. That king on c1 is really not nicely placed. Knight takes e4. Nice shot. The queen is hanging. Queen e1. And knight takes c3. Breaking down the defense around white's king. B takes. And queen a3 check. King stepped aside, and the last move of the game, the 20th move, rook d8 to d6, a nice rook lift, and black is going to checkmate the white king. You can't go to a1 to try and bring the rook to the b file, because there is knight c2 check, winning the queen. And if you, after rook d6, take the knight, because yes, black has sacrificed the piece, if you take on d4, then there is a forced checkmate, rook b6 check, king c2. Rook c8 check, all black's heavy pieces are attacking the poor white king. King d2, and it's checkmate in one move. Do you see it? Rook b2 is checkmate. A crushing win with black by Grandmaster Rouses against quite a strong opponent, Jakub Rubalik, with a rating of 2410. But as I said, the question is did Rouses think of all these great moves all by himself? It has to be said that at the moment that I'm recording this video on July 13th, 2019, Rouses has not been convicted yet, but he has signed a declaration that the phone found on the toilet was his. And as he said himself, he thinks he has played his last game of chess, which is actually very sad. If there will be any major developments in this scandal, I will make sure to report it back to you. In the meantime, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. I'll be very interested to hear what you think of this scandal. If you like the video, please share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.